Right. Uh, what's up, everybody? Grim Green here. Thank you so much for joining me. I have a pod today. This is the You Well Whirl T1. I personally was a really big fan of the prior Whirl that came out from You Well, the Whirl S. I used it constantly. It had a great battery life. I like those You Well coil heads. Gave me great flavor. It had a little bit more open of a mouth to lung for me, which I, I kind of prefer. So it was a really great fit. Had really high expectations for the UWell Whirl T1. Here's what we're doing today. I've been using this Whirl T1 for ah, two and a half, maybe three weeks, and I've been really, really enjoying it. But I have run into one little weird issue it's just one little weird issue, okay? And because of that little weird issue that I've been having, I'm gonna go ahead today and set up the second one. Vapes great, vapes like a UL Whirl, vapes like those great UL Whirl coil heads, but like I said, there's just one little weird thing. And what I'm talking about is just this, just this little wobble that happens on the pod. It happens frequently and it happens consistently, which is really why I wanna set up this second T1 to see if it happens on there. It's not just a little bit of an annoyance. It's not just that, oh, it's it just feels a little bit loose. It's that, no, that actually affects the vape. That affects your airflow. It affects whether or not your pod is actually connected down to the contacts. I first discovered this, obviously, you know, you notice it a little bit when it's wobbling, but I first noticed it when I start taking a drag because there's no buttons on this. It's all auto switch, right? So I go to take a drag, nothing happens. Go to take a drag, nothing happens. I go like this, clunk, and I seat it back down in there and suddenly it starts working great, starts working great. And I've got, I trained myself to have this like sick habit. Every time I grab the UL Whirl T1, I hold, I end up holding it like this. I put my thumb over the pod to compensate for the fact that this pod might be, might not be making a real great connection in that battery. And unfortunately it's not making a real great connection consistently. Like over and over and over. But when it does make a good connection, it's just damn enjoyable. So we're gonna jump down real quick. We'll set this up. We'll see if this Whirl T1 suffers from the same wobbly pod issue that that one does. Um, I'm not sure if I'll have chapters across this video, but let's get into it. <clears throat> All right, yeehaw, here we go. It's the Whirl T1. This is the CRC version, whoops. Whirl T1 Mod Pod CRC version. So that means uh, this could be for sale in Canada. There's your Whirl Pod on the inside. This one is gray. Underneath your pod, that's it. You get nothing. You get uh, a warranty card. You get some UL instruction manuals and literature as well as the silica pack. It's honestly pretty slick. It's a nice little sort of uh, triangular design USB-C on the bottom right there. It's kind of got these Caliburn-ish looking textures on there. That's your screen. I'm gonna use air quotes here screen, and then you can see along the top of the pod, that's airflow, that's airflow, that's airflow. Internal 1300 ma or a milliamp hour battery isn't nothing to blow your nose at either. Pods are press fit in. There's no sort of magnetic happenings going on. They click in. Oh, I will say this one feels pretty secure right now, but so did the other one before I set it up. In fact, this is an issue with Whirls just in general. It's the same thing that happened with my Whirl S after a couple of months. Let's get this set up real quick. I'll show you how we adjust the wattage because it is actually pretty interesting. We're gonna peel this sticker off. Just the world's strongest sticker, that's fine. Oh my God. The pod itself is all self-contained. Your coil head's not coming out of here, but that little red hole right there is your fill hole. This actually fills up in a pretty slick way. It fills the exact same way as that old Revenant squonker from like 2018, if anybody remembers that, but you just press your tip of your bottle in here and you can kind of feel it like squish down. Do you see that little red nozzle kind of release there? It fills up smoothly and perfectly. You just bleh. The only way that you can see that it's full or full 
feel that it's full is when it overflows a little bit at the top. And that's just, look, there's no way around it. If you want to use this fill system, that's, that's how it's going to let you know that it's full. And another thing you're going to see on the bottom here is Roman numerals two and three. So the red fill hole represents number one, and then you have Roman numeral two, and then Roman numeral three. That is how you adjust your wattage. Seems weird. I know. Well, it's not impossible to see, but down there you can see that little tiny hole. That's your airflow like auto switch trigger right there. You have some contacts and then you kind of have your airflow and the channels that your airflow is going to sort of take. When you're putting your pod in here, that's actually how you adjust the wattage is with those Roman numerals on the bottom. So if you put the red, the number one facing forward, boosh like that, that's going to be 14 watts. If I rotate the coil head and put the Roman numeral two facing forward, I'm gonna get two little indicators down here that's 15 watts. If I pull this out and rotate it yet again and stick this back down in here, there's gonna be three little lights that pop up here. That's 16 watts. That's it. That's how you adjust the wattage and those are your three adjustments. If you don't like any of those wattage settings, then sorry, that's all you well gives you. Thankfully, I like it on the lowest wattage setting. In fact, if there was maybe a two watt lower setting, I would use that one. Now to adjust your airflow down here on the pod, you can see that ProFox, that's your airflow adjustment. Right there is full open. You can swap it to have it be full closed. It creates a intensely, intensely uh, too tight. I'm just gonna say too tight. And this is how I run mine. Yeah, about, about halfway it creates a, uh, I don't know, not not quite a tight mouth to lung. It's still a little bit loose and open, but it's a little bit more restricted. <laughs> if that makes any sense, just using vague terms here. So that's how I'm gonna leave my airflow and I'm gonna put this at 14 watts. Like I said, I've been using that other UL Whirl for about two and a half weeks. Probably gonna use this for about another week, but I'll meet you back up on top and we can wrap this up. Normal view, go. Unfortunately, on this newest gray World T1, the problem remains. Just about my entire summer break has been spent with this UL World T1, and unfortunately, in the newest one that I just opened and set up about a week ago, the problem still remains of the wobbly wobbly coil heads. Or not wobbly wobbly coil heads, sorry. Wobbly wobbly pods. And it's it's one thing, If let's do dislikes. One dislike, yeah, it's the wobbly pods. And you might not see that it's slightly off kilter like that, you can't take a drag. You go to take a drag, doesn't happen. Because it just needs to be seated down a, a microscopic amount, and then it'll work flawlessly. Like I said earlier, I've gotten into this habit of literally every time I grab the World T1, I just put my thumb on top of the pod. Just, it's like a reflex now. And that is, end the video. Like that's a bummer. I still, let's do some things that I like. What do I like about this? Literally everything else. 1300 mAh battery on the inside, boom, that's a bonus. I love the size and the form factor of it. A, a, a triangle, for some reason is just way more comfortable even than just a cylindrical tube. So I love that. USB-C for charging, yeah, love that. The coil heads, those U-Well flavorful dense coil heads, yes, I like those. It just wobbles and that's unacceptable. I can only speak to what I have in front of me so your mileage might vary, yours might not wobble, yours might wobble a whole lot worse than mine did. No real vape budget hands, I guess, for the World T1 from UL. Click it around the internet if you can find it. It's uh, like 35, 35 to 40 bucks. Maybe 40 bucks is at the highest, highest range, but like that 35 to $40 range, eh, maybe a little bit of vape budget hands, especially, actually there will be vape budget hands in that if you buy this, it might not work very well for you. I'm sorry. I'm not trying to dump so hard on the World T1. It's just that I love the World S, like I've already said a thousand times. And I just, I want this World T1 to be better. Just be better. And unfortunately, I think we know where this is gonna go. Let's hand out some banana stickers. Ah, I don't even know. Let's be, let's be generous. I'm a kind God. Three. Three full banana stickers. I'm not a god at all, I was just kidding. Unfortunately, three banana stickers means that this kind of falls into that bucket that's, it's fine. 
It's just fine. I personally wouldn't recommend for myself or many other people out there to actively maybe go seek out the World T1. If you well can fix this wobbly pod issue, this will be a bangin', 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 bangin' times 10 pod. The slick way you fill these pods, the big battery on the inside, the unique way that you adjust your wattage, those are all kind of cool bells and whistles, but they don't mean much if when you go to take a drag, it won't fire because your pod's crooked. Well, I can't put any links down in the description, but did you know that most young people do not vape and even fewer vape regularly? That's only according to researchers at NYU using the CDC's own data. So look, that's not me talking. That's literally just the science. So no matter what's in your hand, you guys, yeah, let's keep on vaping. <coughs> it's like 10.30 and I'm uh, just gonna smoke, so. Reminds me of the, uh, the old, uh, uh fuck.